Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. It's been a while since I last uploaded a video. Just been looking for things to record, to be honest. And there's one thing that came to my mind because a friend of mine recently came to me with an issue about a smart tank printer, which is the same as the one you're seeing here on the video. So the one I have is a HP Smart Tank 516. It's the same as a HP Smart Tank 515 and 519. The only difference is the color options. You have a black, you have this CN color, and then there's a red and white, I believe, for the 519. So there's a few issues with this printer, namely around paper handling. And I've even seen comments on my videos about paper jams and paper being handled inappropriately by this printer. And on this screen at the moment, if I just zoom in, I've deliberately created this error, which was an error which was identified by a friend of mine, and he was trying to find a fix for this error. So I'll show you a page on my phone in a moment, which where you can find information about different error codes. This one specifically looks like E2. Well, it looks a bit backwards, but as you can see, it's flashing away there. I've deliberately created this error to explain what's happening here. So you can see that the error code here blinking on the screen, and you can also see by the paper load button, there's an orange, oops, my fingers isn't covering it, but there's an orange light flashing. Now what this means is, Basically, E2, if you look at the HP website for the error codes, I'll link that in the description below. And it just means that your paper size is incorrect. Now that could be either that you have the incorrect paper loaded or that on your machine or on your computer or whatever device you're printing from, it has the wrong paper size for the printout. Now, I've obviously deliberately created this error. Now, one thing I want to show you is if you get this error, what you can actually do, I'm just going to zoom out so you can see this, it's a dummy two page document I've created to simulate this error. So I'm just gonna press the paper load button so that it goes on to the second page and it should just load the next page and print the second page. Right, so that's done now. So what I've actually done in my Microsoft Word document, I've selected at the time of printing a size of legal. Now legal is much longer than A4. So here in the UAE and maybe most parts of the world, you would have a paper size known as A4. And in the US, you have something known as US letter. So what happens is, if you don't select the paper size to match your paper in the printer from the document that you're printing, you will get this error. Because the paper in the printer is not long enough and it detects that the page has not ended from the document. So that's why you receive this E2 error. So you can see the errors are all gone now, the page is printed and it just says zero, zero. Now why this will be a problem is because as my friend pointed out to me was that he had to keep pressing the load button to continue printing a multiple page document. That can be really frustrating. So the way around this is I have A4 paper in the printer. I make sure from Microsoft Word or Adobe PDF or whatever document you're printing, make sure you select A4 from the printer or make your printer region always default to A4. That way you won't have any issues with the paper length. So this can happen in one of many ways. For example, all of our work laptops, mine and my friends, who's a colleague at work as well, we all have US laptops and the devices we have here, so his personal laptop will have A4 as part of the regional settings. His US laptop will have US letter as part of the printer settings. So when he prints a page from his home laptop or PC, which is set to A4, it will print without any issues. However, from his work laptop, which is set to US letter by default, he may get this E2 load error. So if he's watching, now you know what the problem is. We did discuss it and hopefully it's solved his problem. So it does actually mention this on HP's website that you need to make sure you've got the correct paper size loaded. Now let's move on to paper jams. So a lot of you would have seen that this printer is notable for paper jams. HP even has their own video feed on YouTube or channel rather, which talks about paper jams and talks about a lot of their printers and this is definitely one of them. And there's lots of people complaining about paper jams. Now, as mentioned in one of my comments to, as a reply to someone who asked a comment about paper jams, one thing that I found useful was, I noticed that when there are only a few pages here in the paper tray, if you only have like two or three papers, the, the paper feeder for some strange reason takes more than one page at a time. And really in 2020 or whenever this printer was released, it really shouldn't happen. These inkjet printers have been around for years and HP really should have fixed this by now. One more thing that I've noticed, uh, so uh, sorry, on this note, if you actually put at least 50 sheets of paper or something like that, a big amount of paper like I have here, you won't notice as many paper jams. At least I haven't yet, and I keep my paper loaded 
just to make sure that I don't have that same paper feeding issue where it takes more than one page at a time and then you get these paper jam errors, you have to open the panel, release the paper jam, things like that. There's plenty of videos around that, feel free to check them out on YouTube. So there's one more thing that I've noticed in relation to this paper jam issue. So what I've noticed is, you can't really see on the video here, but there's a blue tab here which you can use to, for the paper guide. So if I take the paper out here, you'll see there's a guide for US letter, there's a guide for A4, there's other for A5, things like that. Now you can use this guide to make sure that your paper is correctly seated inside the document feeder. Now what happens over time? This printer shakes a lot when it takes the paper in. So over time, slowly that guide moves. At least that's what I've noticed. I don't know if any of you have noticed this, but then what happens is the paper goes in bent and you get a bent printout or you know, it may even get jammed because of that. So I would recommend after every few prints or maybe if you're not printing so frequently, maybe before you print, just make sure you push the tab against the paper just so that it loads correctly. So these are the few issues that I wanted to talk about. I mean, I know it's just about the error codes, how to look at the error codes and also about paper jams and the paper feeder and letter sizes, A4 sizes, things like that. Make sure you have the correct paper size. Make sure you have enough paper in the printer. The printer is decent. It does good photocopying. It has good color printouts. It, so far, my ink is still fairly good and I, I don't really use it much, so I can't really comment on how long that's going to last. But apparently on the box, they say for these printers, they come with three black cartridges and three color cartridges and that should last you about three years. Obviously, that is going to vary based on your printing volume. So if you do find these videos useful, please do feel free to subscribe. It really does help me to continue creating content like this, which is hopefully ending, helping end users with similar issues or even learning about new products that I'm reviewing or unboxing on my channel. So let me just quickly grab my phone and I'm just gonna show you the HP website, specifically for the Smart Tank 500. There will be similar pages for all other models and I'll show you the error codes on HP's website. Back in a moment. Before I show you the website, I just remembered one more thing that I wanted to mention was that it's possible that maybe with thicker paper, so usually A4 paper, standard A4 paper or normal paper is usually 80 GSM. That's basically the weight of the paper. So 80 GSM is the typical thinnest form of paper that you can get and it's generally, generally most printer paper that you buy is 80 GSM. So maybe moving up to something like 100 GSM, it does mean it will cost a bit more, but the quality of the printer will also improve and hopefully that will really make the paper not jam as much because like i said when i was had a few sheets of paper it would take more than one sheet so i'm guessing it's just a guess i haven't tried it yet maybe if some of you guys have already tried 100 gsm paper and have had any good experience with it or bad experience with it please do let us know in the comments so that everyone can benefit from this information back in a moment Okay, I'm back. So I've got the page loaded. This is the HP Smart Tank print 500 printer. So the 500 series of HP printers, blinking lights and errors. So on this page, it talks through the display, tells you some information. And then if you scroll down further, you'll see these sections about the different error codes. I probably should have done this on my PC screen. I'm not sure how clear it is on the video, but I just want to show you as an example, the one that we looked at. So you've got E1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, E7 as well. And the one we looked at was E2. So if we open this up, and it will actually tell you here, I don't know if you can read it there, it just says the paper in the input print does not match the paper settings. Press the cancel button, load the correct paper or change the paper size in the software. Like I mentioned, if I was using Word, so I have to make sure I select the correct paper size in Word. So that's essentially the issue there. And you can get lots of information about different error codes here on HP's website. And hopefully this will help, will help you to alleviate the problems that you may be experiencing with this printer. now. Like I said, it, these things really shouldn't be happening in 2020. I really don't think that they should be, but again, given the, the cost of the printer and the longevity of the inks and things like that, maybe we can give them a break this time, but really I do feel that hopefully in the next release of these, this range of printers, uh, they will fix all of these issues. So that's it for this video. Please do feel free to subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.